Hey, welcome to our series on complex numbers. And in this video, we'll focus again on the imaginary number. And we are going to expand on how to use the imaginary number. So in a previous video, we learned that the imaginary number is noted as i, and it is the square root of negative 1. We know that this number cannot be plotted on a number line, and also that it cannot be simplified further. But look what happens if I square i. So i squared would be the square root of negative 1 squared. And that simply is equal to negative 1. Now if I take the cube of i, I have the square root of negative 1 cubed, which is equal to the square root of negative 1 squared times the square root of negative 1, which is equal to negative 1 times i, or simply negative i. And if I raise i to the fourth power, I have the square root of negative 1 to the power of 4. And that is equals to the square root of negative 1 squared times the square root of negative 1 squared, which is negative 1 times negative 1, which is equals to positive 1. So what we are seeing is that i is equals to the square root of negative 1, that i squared is equals to negative 1, i to the power of 3 is equals to negative i, and i to the power of 4 is equals to positive 1. So a rule that we can use is if I raise i to the power of 1n, that will be equal to the square root of negative 1. If I raise i to the power of 2n, that will be equals to negative 1. i to the power of 3n would be equals to negative i and i to the power of 4n would be equals to positive 1. So let's say we want to find i to the power of 2006. That is equals to i to the power of 2 times 1003. So I know that that value would be equal to negative 1, because this is the same as saying i to the power of 2n. And notice that this is a real solution. So if I focus on i, I can have a non-real solution or a real solution of negative 1 when it's raised to the power of 2n. When it's raised to the power of 3n, I have a non-real solution again. And when it's raised to the power of 4n, I again have a real solution of positive 1. Now let us consider other applications of i. If I ask you for the square root of 4, that will be equal to 2. But if I ask you for the square root of negative 4, that is equal to the square root of 4 times negative 1. And we know that we can split the square root up into two parts. So the square root of 4 is equal to 2 times the square root of negative 1. And that is equal to 2i. So now what we are learning is that we can simplify a square root when it is negative. Another example is the square root of negative 36. That is equals to the square root of 36 times negative 1, which is equals to 6 times the square root of negative 1, and that is equals to 6i. How about the square root of negative 8? We can rewrite negative 8 as 4 times 2 times negative 1. Now, the square root of 4 is equals to 2 and we cannot solve the square root of 2 because that's an irrational number and then we have the square root of negative 1 so the square root of negative 8 is equals to 2 square root 2 i and those are some practical tips on how we would apply the imaginary number in complex numbers